my friends welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Tori if you're new and I'm so stinking excited that you're here today we're going to be reorganizing my bookshelves which I thought would be fun to do together but at the same time we're going to be doing a tag video that was created by Hannah Blackwell she is so incredible I'm gonna leave her channel tagged down below this is called the fantasy romance reader book tag if y'all know me you know that I love Romanticy. I host the Romanticy Readathon, which takes place in February. This year was our first year doing it, but we are absolutely doing it again. I love fantasy romance. It just brings me so much joy. I believe I'm going to do a voiceover of the questions while we organize my bookshelves together because they need some redoing. They've been feeling kind of boring and I've had them like this for a really long time so I thought that this would be really fun to do. I'm also going to be hauling some books for my b-day and so I need to make room for some new books as well. So let's get into it. If you're excited please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Let's do it! The first question is what book got you into fantasy romance? I can't remember which book I read first, but it was back in 2020 when I started getting back into reading, as I think a lot of us did around that time. And it was either the Carval series by Stephanie Garber, so the first book being Carval. If you know me, you know that I recommend that book to absolutely everyone. I love that book series so much. But then the other one might have been Fable by Adrienne Young. That's another one that I read really when I first started to get back into reading, like I mentioned. And I can't remember which one of them came first, but it was one of those two, and I'm still absolutely obsessed with them. The next question is, if you could pick one fantasy world to live in for the rest of your life, which would it be? This one's difficult because if I wanted a really flowery, cutesy fairy tale world, I would absolutely 100% pick Stephanie Garber with her whole Carvel series and the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. I love those books so much and I think that they would be so beautiful to live in, but I love a kind of like dark gothic type world. And so my mind immediately went to one Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. I love that society because it's very nature oriented. All of the families in that society are named after trees and I love the forest. I love trees. They're like my happy place. I don't know what it is. Everyone lives in these really like dark ancient castles and I just love the darkness of that world. So I think I would pick that world over the Stephanie Garber world because also the men are kind of morally gray. They're dark knights with magic, and that's kind of a vibe. Question number three, if you could marry one bookish hero or heroine, who would it be? If I could marry one bookish heroine, it would be Bryce Quinlan. She is just my absolute queen. I think about her nonstop all the time. I just love her so much. She's such a badass. I'm really torn about who to pick for my book husband. There's so many good ones. My first thought was to go to the A Touch of Darkness series and the Hades that Scarlett St. Clair writes about in those books. I just love him so much and I feel like he and I would just vibe. But my other absolute love of my life is Jax from the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. And he does, you know, appear in the Carvel series too. I, I'm so torn about him because I love him. I literally love him with my entire heart and soul, but I never thought that I would fall for a blonde love interest. Like he is the only exception for me. I am a tall, dark, handsome, tattooed type of gal, but Jax just does something for me. But I think I have to stick with my with my gut, and my first choice was Hades from the A Touch of Darkness series. So we're gonna go with that. I could have a million others that I wanna throw in here as well. The fact that it's making me pick just one book husband, I don't think that there could have been a harder question, but there it is. Yes. 
Question number four, what fantasy creature or magical being would you be? I've always wanted to be a witch. Like whenever I was little and I would play make-believe, I would practice being a witch. But with all of the fantasy books that I read, I think that being a fae would be really fun to live for a long time. I feel like all fae men are just absolutely gorgeous and unhinged and that is a vibe. <laughs> but if I had to pick more of like a true creature, because I feel like fae are very human in a lot of ways outside of the fact of like their lifespan and their magical abilities, I think that being a dragon would be pretty dang cool. So there's that, but my first choice would probably be either a fae or a witch. Question number five, if you could kill one fantasy romance character, who would it be? It's Taryn. It's Taryn from the Folk of the Air series. I read those books two years ago. She still lives in my head rent-free as public enemy number one. You're not going to do my bestie girly pop, Jude, the way that you did her and call her your twin sister. Absolutely not. Straight to jail. You're dead. Question six, what fantasy romance character do you truly believe would be your in real life best friend? Nesta. Absolutely Nesta. She doesn't like to interact with other people. She likes to read smutty romance books in the library, in her room. We could work out together. Um, absolutely, yes. And she's such a baddie queen. How can you not love Nesta? If you don't like Nesta, I this channel is not a safe space for you. I'm so sorry. I love Nesta and I would love to be her in real life bestie. Question seven, what would be your fantasy weapon of choice? I don't know. I want to say knives, but I feel like knives is a very basic answer. I think if I had like my top choice, but I don't know if it counts as a weapon, it would be like magic. Because like I said, I would want to be like a fae or a witch and having some like really cool magic that I can do, I think would be super fun. But I'm not sure that that counts as a weapon, in which case we will say knives and I will be that basic B. Question number eight, who is the sexiest fan row character of all time? I think we can all collectively say this together. Ready? Three, two, one, the Bat Boys. I mean, it's just like no competition. I'm also going to throw in Rune Dannon. Rune Dannon, crown prince of the Valbaran Fae. <laughs> obviously but yeah the sjm men or males just hit different and it has to be the bad boys it has to be rune dannon there's no other answer in my opinion so that's what we're going with brief interlude from the tag questions because this is one bookshelf done. I really like how this one came out. I have my horror shelf on the top, then I have my fantasy series shelf, then I have my hardcover fantasy shelf with some fairy loot book editions there, and then the bottom shelf on this one is my lit fic slash contemporary fiction slash classics shelf. I'm a little torn about the lit fic slash classics shelf because the different book heights and all the colors I'm unsure about, but overall I like the way that this bookshelf came out. Hello. Brief intermission because this is where it gets difficult with my bookshelf planning. So here's the thing about this bookshelf. This shelf is my Sarah J Mass shelf and when I continue to get the Throne of Glass books, I'm going to have to probably expand onto a second shelf, which is totally fine. 
This top shelf has been basically the only theme was black and red books. I feel that I need to move away from that at this point because I've kind of took some books from the shelf and put them on that other bookshelf. So I don't know. I think what I need to do is have another shelf of fantasy series because I have, I'm looking at some books over here and some books right here that are books that are also in fantasy series. And I have enough that I don't know if it'll fill out like another full shelf at this point, but it will eventually. Fantasy books are my absolute favorite books to purchase. But then I have this stack, which is my romance books. So I don't have a significant amount of them, but it's enough that like I need some dedicated place to put them. You know what I mean? I don't know, things are getting difficult, but we will continue with the tag questions now. Question nine, pick one fantasy romance book to burn. I don't think I would be able to do this because if I'm not into a fantasy romance book or any book in general, I've learned to DNF. It is a skill. I used to be someone who would finish whatever book I was reading regardless of how much I disliked it, but now I just DNF. And I really also don't give out a lot of one star books because one star books for me are going to be books that I just didn't love, they weren't for me, and so I would just DNF one star books. Even my two star books, I would give them a two star just because it wasn't like my favorite thing in the world, but I can't say that I would have a fantasy romance book to burn. If you have one fan row book that you would burn, please let me know in the comments down below. Question 10, pick one fantasy romance book. It's the only book you will ever be able to read again. What is it? I don't know if Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood counts as a fantasy romance book, but that's the book that I'm picking. I have reread it, or I have read it three times total. So I've reread it twice. I will reread it again. It is my favorite book. It makes me feel some type of way. That is the book that if I could reread it for the first time again, that's gonna be my pick. So that is my answer. The last question, question 11. If you could recommend one fantasy romance book to a reader that was new to the genre and wanted to try it out, what book? Would it be? This is a really difficult question because I feel like there's so many subgenres in fantasy romance that there's something for everyone. I've recommended a lot of Stephanie Garber's books to new fantasy romance readers because I feel like her writing is easily digestible for someone who's not super familiar with a fantasy book. There's not extensive world building, it's just very easy to fall into her world and fall into her writing, which I really loved. I also would obviously recommend like an Akatar because even though the world building in that series might be a bit more extensive, once you read those books, you get hooked. It's like a drug. There are drugs in Akatar. It's just so addicting. And then also you have so many people to talk about those books with after you've read them that I feel like the Akatar books are a gateway into the fantasy romance world because it really helps you feel a part of a community and one of my favorite parts about reading books in general but especially fantasy romance books is screaming about them with other people i just think it's so much fun but the last books that i would recommend to because i feel like enemies to lovers is such a fun trope that so many people really enjoy i would recommend the folk of the air series because jude and Carden are the best enemies to lovers i love them so much it's another ya one as well if they wanted something a little bit more adult with some spice, but still absolutely incredible enemies to lovers, I would recommend The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle Jensen. That enemies to lovers story just lives in my head rent free.
I'm going to leave all of these questions in the description box below. If you would like to participate in this tag, please consider yourself tagged by me. I'm going to tag a couple people that I think would really enjoy participating in this tag as well. But I would also love to see your answers to these questions in the comments down below if you would like to share your answers. We're going to call this second bookshelf my work in progress bookshelf. So the books along the top are all of the books that I'm selling on Pango. I do have a Pango store that's linked in the description box below if you'd like to buy any books. Then we have my less organized fantasy shelf. I don't love how these are arranged and I will be fixing it, but this is how they look for now. Then we have my TBR shelf slash books that I just don't have a great place for yet. This is my least favorite shelf and I don't know what to do about it. Then we have my Sarah J Mass shelf and then the top shelf on this one is just some manga that I have, but it's going to be my dedicated romance shelf. I just don't have a lot of contemporary romance books right now, but I will be adding to it. That is it, my friends. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I post every Sunday and Thursday. We also do monthly reading sprints on this channel the last weekend of every month. I will say, just as a recap, this is definitely becoming my favorite shelf. The other shelf I'm just still struggling with because one of those shelves in the middle is my TBR shelf. And I don't love it because all those books feel very mismatch. And then that second fantasy shelf that I have, the colors are just like off for me at this point in time. So there will be some rearranging going on, but I'm pretty happy with how they look. I really like my horror shelf most of all because I love showing off this copy of Dracula. I just think that it's so beautiful. I still need to read it though. I'm hoping to also better organize my lit fic shelf as well. This shelf, the sizing is really like throwing me off, but we will figure it out. If y'all have any tips about how you organize your bookshelves, please leave them in the comments down below. I would so, so appreciate that because for me, it's like book height and then also color at the same time. And it's difficult, difficult, lemon difficult. But anyways, I will catch you in the comments and I'll see you in my next video, friends. Bye.